In Dynamics GP, you can easily process sales orders, invoices, and customer returns. Let's take a look at it. All these transaction types can be processed in the Sales Transaction Entry screen. Let's navigate there. And let's enter an order. When I tab off this, it's going to automatically supply me a document number. I can look up the customer, tab over, and I want to enter a batch ID. Once I've entered the customer, I can click on this expansion arrow and get additional information on this particular order and also the customer. If I need to change the ship to address for this particular order, I can select that, go to this expansion window, and change the information right here. It will just change on this order. I also have access to other information about the customer. For example, I can click on payments. I'll get a payment history for this particular customer. In this sales order, I can add as many line items as I want to. So let me look up one here. I'm going to add this item. It will automatically pull in the price from the price list in the inventory system. And let's say I want to select another item. I can do that as well. And let's say I wanted to buy a lot of this. If I don't have enough on hand, this window is going to come up. This is the allocation window. It's going to ask me where I want to pull the amount that I don't have. I have 94 available in this warehouse location. I need 200. Where am I going to get the additional? I have these options to pull from. I'm just going to back order the balance. I'll do that right here. And looking at the sales order, there's a couple of ways to look at this. I'm looking at it in a grid. I have one line per line item. I can open up that and see a form. And here you can see that I've ordered 200. I'm going to back order 106. And 94 have been fulfilled. And they are going to be invoiced. I can also look at the detail line. I can click on this expansion arrow here and see all the information about this particular line. I also have access to user defined fields. Open that up. I can use tracking numbers here for UPS or other shippers. I can define these any way I want to. And these values will be stored with this particular order. And they'll also flow to the invoice. Now I can print this order out by clicking on this icon here. And I can save it. And when it's time to ship, I can look that order up. Pull it back in. And generally, our clients, when they ship an order, what they'll do is they'll transfer it to an invoice. That's a signal to the system that an order, an open order, has been shipped. So let's do that. We can do this on a batch level or on a basic, basic transaction level. So I'm going to go to Actions here and transfer this. I'm going to transfer it to an invoice. I'm going to select Transfer to Invoice and include all totals and deposits. So let's transfer that. What it's going to do is going to create a new transaction, an invoice transaction. That invoice is linked back to the order. So if I click on this expansion arrow here, I can see an audit trail for this particular invoice. You can see that it was related to this order. Now, what I can do is I can save this into a batch. But what I want to do is I want to post this online real time. So I'm going to take the batch ID out of there. And then I'm going to go to Actions and Post It. When I post this invoice, the inventory is going to be relieved for these items, for those quantities. And the invoice transaction is going to be created in the receivables. And all the GL transactions behind those documents are going to be created. So now if I want to do a customer return on that, I could easily do that in the same window. Let's go to Transaction Sales, Sales Transaction Entry. And this time, the type is going to be a return. Let's process a quick return on this. I'm going to look up the customer again. It's going to be the same customer. Put that into a batch. Then I can look up the number here. Select this one. And I'm going to return one in. When I tab off that, it's going to ask me, where do I want to put that quantity? I have these different quantity types that I'm tracking in inventory. I can put on hand. That means it's going to be available for resale. Or if I just want to put it in a return category, I can do that. These quantity types are tracked in inventory, and you'll see that in the quantity screens. 
I'm going to hit OK. And this is a return item, so I'm putting in positive amounts here, but the system knows that these are going to be negative. In other words, I'm going to add this back into inventory, and I'm going to credit the customer for this dollar amount. So when I post this, it's going to create a, a return and a credit into the customer's receivable. Let's post that right now. Let's take a look at these transactions in the inquiry screen. If I go to inquiry sales transaction by customers, this is a very useful screen to take a look at a particular customer and see the activity in that account. What I want to do is I want to look at just the open receivable, so I can unselect work and history. Then let's just look at the particular date. This is the date that I've been working with, so I'm going to redisplay that. And these two transactions shows up. These are the invoice. This is the invoice that I just created, and this is the return. I can select that and drill back into that, and I get that information there. I can drill back into the document number and see the order from which that came. I can also look at the return. If I select that record here in the inquiry screen, I can drill back and see that return. So you can see with the sales transaction entry screen, it's easy to create quotes, orders, invoices, and also process customer returns through that. I also have a very good ability to inquiry on a particular customer and drill down on those transactions.